Yeah, that's that's really, really important. Now, and this is where it comes back to what you said. Was this being just driven by financial considerations? Because uh, this was blatantly obvious with the way how the virus operated. I, I was saying this based on the research. When you looked at the animal models with regards to SARS-CoV-2, before they even got symptoms, it was in their lungs. And so using an injectable would always be behind the virus. It would always never quite catch up to it. You had to somehow get the upper airway mucosal um, system to be effective. And strangely enough, this is exactly what the paper says as well. So if they knew that then, why didn't they apply it? Well, here's the thing, Philip, that's very interesting. And, you know, we can you have to look back, you know, we stand on the shoulders of others. Okay. What that means is, you know, I can't do all the research. I have to, I have to build on what others have done before me. Okay. So going back to SARS, the original in 2003, we had 17 years, 17 years of research on SARS. Okay. So we can base our knowledge on SARS-CoV-2 on what we know from SARS. Okay, SARS-CoV-2 is SARS reemerged. It's the same virus, uses the same receptor, it behaves similarly, cause similar disease. So let's look back in the literature, okay? And it was very interesting to me if you look back in the efforts to develop a vaccine for SARS, the original, um, there were distinct issues with developing a vaccine. So a paper, quite interestingly, that came out of um, Ralph Barrick's lab in 2015 showed that they tried, they tried live attenuated influenza um, or live attenuated coronavirus vaccine. They also tried double inactivated vaccine and neither of them worked. Not only did neither of those platforms work, but they caused immune pathology. So they knew already that standard platforms for developing a vaccine against SARS were not going to work. They already knew that based on the history of research that had already been done. And so could that have explained why they decided to go for mRNA? Because they had already, yes, I, I remember looking at a paper in 2012, they tried four different types of injectable vaccines and every one of them created a T helper two immune allergic response. And it said clearly caution when developing vaccines against this virus. So you're right, they knew this. Could this have been the reason that they went for the mRNA? Were they hoping that this technology would evade that kind of problem? I mean, we can give them the benefit of the doubt and say, yeah, we had to try some kind of new technology to get past those barriers. Um, you know, the, the thing is, at the end of the day, Philip, not every virus is amenable to vaccination, okay? Mm -hmm. And as outlined in the Fauci paper that you brought up, um, you know, and I believe I've said this before as well, there's a reason we don't vaccinate against these highly mutable RNA viruses. There's a reason that it doesn't work. And instead of spending our time and money on vaccination as the end all be all, you know, golden, uh, you know, get us out of this pandemic, we should have used resources to pivot and to develop therapeutics, effective therapeutics.